Welcome everyone to another episode of the Powerhouse Podcast. I have to say that I am bouncing in my seat because my guest who is going to join me in the ring today is truly a powerhouse in his own right and the work he's doing is truly incredible. So I am excited for us to engage in a powerful dialogue uh, on this show and before I get started and tell you more about what we're going to do, let me just give a shout out and warm welcome to my friend and just truly magnificent uh, human being, Rob Lowe. Welcome to the show. Moi, Candy, it is an honor. It's a pleasure to be around you anytime, and it's an honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I'm so excited. I can already feel the energy. And so as you know, this is our platform to really have those courageous connected conversations. We are going to get in the heart of what really matters. And we're really going to challenge and redefine leadership as it shows up today. And as you know, I always say leadership is a choice. It's how we choose to show up. It's how we choose to serve others and how we choose to take that personal responsibility. And so this is going to be really good and really meaty. And so before we jump in and go a few rounds, let me tell you a little bit about Rob and why I adore him so much. Rob Lowe is the host of the Giving Back podcast. I have actually been honored to be a guest on his show and it is a tremendous uh, place with just incredible insight and I highly urge you to check it out. It's a show that shines the spotlight on people and organizations doing amazing things for others. He makes it easy for people to do good, connecting nonprofits with their next generation of donors and helping business owners give and grow rich. Love that frame. Rob's tombstone will read, he built people's capacity to serve their community. And I could tell you, I could go on and on and on about why I adore him so much, but I think that's a perfect segue to get into our conversation. And I think it's awesome that you threw out exactly what you want your tombstone to read. Cause I've said that my eulogy will say simply, Candy was batshit crazy, the end. Enough said, right? And so I love that yours is more heart-centered in, in a serving space to say that you're building a capacity for people to serve their community. What does that really mean? So, you know, it's, it's amazing how um, in, the, in the course of the show, which I started in the 4th of July, um, it, it, a couple of years ago, I'm just so surprised, I don't know why, um, that to know that we are simply surrounded by greatness. I mean, literally the best of humankind is all around us. And I get to highlight that. And one of the things that, uh, that I learned along the way um, is start with the end in mind, right? Start with the end in mind and build it backwards. And there was this great exercise uh, that I started working through uh, called the tombstone exercise. And you, I mean, if you really want to talk about, you know, starting with the end in mind, you know, that's the <laughs> yeah, end, right? End in that, right? <laughs> <laughs> it totally doesn't. So I, so I worked through that a little bit and I thought to myself, well, I'm, I know what my purpose is. My, my purpose, you know, is to make it easy for people to do good and, and people always step up to the plate and our capacity, our capacity to serve others is really limited only by our imagination, right? I mean, we talk about ready, willing, and able, and I actually flip that because we are all able. It's just a matter of if we are willing and then ready is simply taking a step. It's simply taking that action. So that is each of our capacity to serve. And I want to build that. I mean, it's just simply there's just, we individually have so much untapped potential, right? I mean, it's, it's known, you know, we, we, we get cozy, we get comfortable, you know, we get, you know, we get kind of not stuck, but well, I may be stuck, right? In our comfort zone, right? And we know where the magic is. I mean, you're a great example of that. You stretch and you grow and you're, and, and you lead others to stretch and to grow. I mean, I, I, was a, I was definitely a recipient of that working with you. Thank you for not saying victim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are not, yeah, in Candy's world, we are not, we are, we are none of us victims. We are all choosers of, of, of what we do, right? And I love that. So, you know, I, I think of that capacity, my capacity to serve, your capacity to serve, you know, be active, be engaged. What can you do? It's just, there's, there's like, 
there is no limit to how each of us can make a difference in one person's life and then in many people's lives, right? It, it's, there's, there's no limit. We have so much, right? We, we really truly do. And everybody, everybody has something to give. Everybody has something that somebody else needs or wants. And hey, you know, that's, that's where it's happening for me, you know? Yeah, and, and I think, first of all, I would imagine everyone that's listening right now is experiencing what I am. There is such heart and such passion and such love in this, in your vision, in your purpose. You can feel you in every part of you being engaged in this. And I think about when you use the word untapped, you are in a, an example of stepping into an untapped terrain because you are really helping nonprofit organizations and those with mighty missions that are not doing it to create a funding engine for themselves, but to just be servants in a massive way. And your whole vision is to connect those people to money and access and ways to make that possible. That is an uncharted, untapped playing field. Most people wouldn't want to play in, right? Because most people, their fear and other things would creep in and go, whoa, that's huge. That's this bohemoth thing sitting out there. That There's nothing in it for me, so why would I jump in that space? And so I think it's really powerful and very important to understand why this is your burning desire, why this is the mission and purpose, what makes this so, because Rob, when you talk, we can hear it. We can hear your, your devotion and your love and your energy around this. What makes that so absolutely has to be your space? Cause it's a necessity for you. You, when you get to know Rob and you play in space with him, you know, without a doubt, this is not just something that you're doing out of the kindness of your heart. You wake up every day with a necessity that you need to stand in that space. And being that it's such untapped, uncharted territory, why this space? What, what drives you to play here? So there's, there's, there's a fellow named Jim Ron. Uh, he was like a godfather of this, you know, unleashing your potential. That's really what I look at. It's not self-help. It's just unleashing it, right? Un, you know, peel back the onion. Um, you know, stop. I, you know, stop tripping on your own dick, right? <laughs> so, he, you know, he said something that was really awesome. There's this, it's, it's beautiful. He said, you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And, and you know, when you think about that, when I think about that and the meaning that has, it's like, it's so beautifully true in a number of ways. First of all, it's not just inspiration, it's also aspiration, right? And so what I found as when I chose to, when I chose to launch a podcast that's about people doing amazing things for others, I had no idea what, how it would impact me. I just knew that I liked being around them and I wanted to spend more time with them and this was going to be the way I could do it. Okay. And it just, it just, it just opened my eyes to so many different things beyond the community service. It opened my eyes to, um, you know, this mindset of abundance. It opened my mind, my, it opened me up to vulnerability, which is not part of my background. That's just not how I grew up. Right. It, it opened my eyes to things like really reading people in terms of their energy and what I could feel and using that as a way to address my audience, whether it's one-to-one -one or whether it's one-to-many to really get a feeling for that. So I, 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 you know, I have, I don't, my background isn't at all like this. I'm, I am, I am a capitalist through and through. I, I love business. I think it's exciting. It's, it's, it's just, it's mind blowing what businesses can do. And when you put them together and this idea of like, I have, right. A nonprofit has something of value instead of looking for a handout, let's bring it to market and let's, and let's give it value and let's share it with the world and let's get something in return so that we continue what is our purpose, right? And then on the flip side for businesses, you know, business 
has, has always been about, you know, you, you know, you don't mix business and pleasure. Don't mix business. That's not how it works. Right. And it's been like that forever, but, but it, it actually isn't like that. That's actually a relatively new phenomenon. When, when the blacksmith or the farmer or the seamstress or, you know, the ice cream guy, when that was first, that was a point of pride. And that was about family. That was deeply personal. And they were heavily engaged in the community, right? Absolutely. Well, there is power in that. And we are at this point in a, it's not even an evolution. It is a revolution in our economy here and globally that consumers are voting with their pocketbooks on aligning their own values with companies and brands who are also doing good, who are also really making a difference in their communities and making a difference in the lives of people around them. And, and that's, that's a phenomenal, phenomenal point in time that we're at. So I, I just, I feel like I'm lucky to be here with a particular set of skills around a particular group of people and saying, look, this is the way that you can tap into for nonprofits, your next generation. You have so much untapped potential there, not just in the services that you provide, but also in the people who deeply, who are deeply, deeply connected to you and your cause. You can engage them and grow into the next generation of donors. And, then, and for businesses, you have time, talent, and treasure that as a business owner, you can bring to bear and share that, not give it, even just sharing that, right? And in the process, bring people into you who want to be around you because now you can show your purpose. It's, it is, it's an awesome, amazing time to be just, just be alive and to have this, have this moment. You know, that's, that's, I mean, you're just, it's, we're, we're in a magnificent space, you know? We are. And it's fun. It's, not funny. It's awesome and it's beautiful that you capture that and you say that, night. And you're so eloquent in the way that you powerly, powerfully position where the nonprofit can play and where the business, you know, from a business can play. And what I love so much about that is most people right now think, oh, we're in such this hard time. We're in such this shutdown time. We're in such this time of feeling like there's no options and choices when actually that's the inverse of what's really going on. And I think you so intentionally highlighted the fact that we are in the most magnificent time possible because of some of the convergences that are coming and crossing and the threads that are happening. And I think it's interesting because there's a couple frames I really want to call out that you talked about. It's about having that inspiration and aspiration. It's not an either or equation. It's such a powerful and. And when you bring them together and look at where and how they connect, it's beautiful. I also love how you talk about going from an evolution to a revolution. Because I think it's, it, we are past the space of not just evolving, but completely taking the shift around how we look at business, how we look at what we're serving, what we're sharing, what we're giving. And so I, one of the things I want to talk about before I get into this mindset and this program around your give and grow rich, which I love that framing, I want to talk about a little bit because I think it's important as leaders are embracing stepping into their purpose, stepping into their passion, stepping into a space to have that courage to say, I am going to be the person that charts the untapped waters first, right? That goes into that uncharted territory. And the fact that you're willing to do that, I also know, and because you threw the word out there, I'm going to go back there for a moment. The journey through the sum of the vulnerability and the mindset that's happened how has that affected some of the shifts you've made and what has been the reality of, wow, that was not something I was, that wasn't a sandbox I was playing in. This whole mindset journey, this whole vulnerability journey, it got a little whatever at places. What was the, what was that, how, how has that journey been for you and what have been some of the major shifts that you've taken along the way? So I feel like, Oh my God, that's a, that's a, <laughs> a very loaded question. And you know how I roll. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'll, 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 I'll open the kimono here, right? I'll, <laughs> I'll throw it all on the table. Um, 
So it's it's just it's just me and you, right? Just me and you, and like and like and like and like whoever else, yeah, and and your entire tribe. Okay, so this is how it works, right? When uh, I consider this the um, the age of Rob three dot oh, and th- no four dot oh, and four dot oh is kind of like the new old Rob. Mm-hmm. When I um, when I went to school. Uh, when I went to college, it was like a whole new world for me, right? It was new people, new opportunities, new ideas, just, it was fantastic. And I was filled with optimism and joy and there's nothing could have gotten in my way. And I continued along that course. And at one point I started focusing on things that, that are it's not that they're not important. It's just that I started focusing. It, I, my life became out of balance. My priorities shifted and I shifted my priorities. Excuse me. I shifted my priorities and I went to a place that um, was really much more, um, I don't even want to call it materialistic, although it was that. It was more a scarcity mindset you know, that I had to go get and it's zero sum. And it was, um, you know, I just, I felt, I felt it and my personality and like, you know, I, it got buried and it was not, I was not necessarily a pleasant fella to be around. Right. And, um, it was a hard awakening probably like five or six years ago. Um, I, started looking into like how to be better. And I just, I saw it that I, that I really wanted to be a better dad. I wanted to be a better husband. I wanted to be a better friend and coworker. I wanted to be a better son. I, you know, I, I could feel it and it was just a slight nagging. And it was also how it was also framed around, Oh, how I can help other people. Right. Which is pretty arrogant, quite honestly. And then as I was taking this path, I was taking on a deeper and deeper journey of, of actually saying, dude, you know, you need to get your own shit straight and you need to clarify. And this is maybe your last chance. Right. Um, and it was pretty urgent and it was really, really rough. I mean, it, I, all these new ideas coming at me and yeah, I am own stuff. You know, I own my shit. So what do you mean? It's them. That's not doing it right. And you know, what do you mean reaction? I'm responding. Ah, It's all of them. And it's, you know, um, and and it, I, I was, um, it was a rough, it, it was, it was a rough time because even as I was really was taking more ownership and, and really being more cognizant of my own behaviors, it changes things, you know, it changes dynamics and relationships. And even though a person, somebody might like me, it also changes maybe the triad between, you know, let's say me and them directly and somebody else who's in our relationship, you know, and it could be family, it could be friends, it could be co you know, it just changes. And people are really uncomfortable with change in a lot of ways, you know? So I don't know. I, that that's a that's a big part of this journey. I look at me now, and it hasn't been just since the just it hasn't been it's been much longer than just since the show started a couple of years ago. You know, it's it it's it's much longer than that. It was years, and so I feel like right now, like I've never, I haven't had this much energy. I'm 50 years old. I have not had this level of energy and enthusiasm since I was in college in my early, early twenties, even late teens, like I get up and I'm like, bam, I know what I'm about. I know right now what I'm about. And I feel like it's, it's this point of like the journey of aligning, you know, who I am and what I do. And that's so exciting. You know, Mm -hmm. it's just, it's just so exciting. So 
I don't know if that exactly answered your question about vulnerability. Yeah, I will, I, I will tell you. Such gratitude, the fact that you're willing to open up the kimono and, and be honest and transparent. And I know that that's not a, an easy journey for a lot of people, especially for someone who, and I know we've had conversations offline around what it's really taken to be in this journey of vulnerability and being in this journey to open yourself up. And I know even in the time that I've met you, just watching the continued increase in your energy and this passion and this way that you are so powerfully playing in a space that says, I know exactly who I am, what I'm doing, how they connect, how I get to show up, how I get to serve. And I think that underlying taking responsibility inside of the recognition to say, man, am I living in integrity with who I choose to be or who I desire to be and who I'm actually choosing to be? And so I, I, it's so beautiful the fact that you're willing to, to share that and, and, and say that to people because, you know, I've, I've had several guests on the show and we always come back to the space of people thinking that oftentimes when you play a big game, people look at you from the outside and go, oh, they've got it all figured out. Their life is easy. You know, they don't have any fear. They step through that. It amazes me when I hear people say, God, Kenny, you got it. Your life is just, and I'm like, wow, I need to have more transparency. It's not because I want to play the victim, but it's because I want people to see the reality of. Sometimes the fear just gets bigger. The vulnerability gets way bigger. And, you know, oftentimes it's, it's that space of, look, I can either sit in the fear or I can go get some stuff done. And so sometimes it's the absolute, I'm going to, suck up all that energy and all that nervousness. And man, I talk about wide open. I mean, the bigger your game, the more the vulnerability just whoosh. And also making sure that I have safe spaces to share that vulnerability. And so just truly commend and honor the fact that, you know, you're, you're sharing some insight into the fact that while you're in this position that's so powerful right now, and it just keeps expanding and becoming more abundant for you, and you're having much more intention in how you show up and the, and the power that you bring behind that, that it hasn't always been easy and it has been a journey. And uh, so appreciate that, you know, Rob 4.0 is sitting here in front of us sharing that story because that means there's been version 1.0 and some variations and 2.0 and 3.0, which means you didn't just wake up one day and say, yep, this is it. I don't have to do anything else. It's a constant process, right? Constant. I mean, even you know, even recently, the, for myself, um, there were a couple, there are two pieces, two big, big pieces that I am very fortunate that people that I trust and love have actually pointed out to me very gently and over time. And one of them is, one of them is asking, right? One of them is asking for help. And that's, oh, you know, it, it's really difficult for me and I didn't even know it. And somebody very gently said, you know, Rob, your blind spot is that you don't ask. And so she, this person who, oh my God, she's magnificent. And she said, she reframed it for me. She said, Rob, why, why do you want to withhold the experience of giving back from somebody else, especially somebody who loves you and cares about you? And it just like, it like totally, totally blew me away and it and it made me realize that i in the process of giving i was not receiving with an open heart and that means that i was i was i, I wasn't growing you know what i mean i like i wasn't growing and if i'm not growing then that means that i am not actually giving as much as i could you know it's it it works both ways you need the law of reciprocity to be balanced. And Absolutely. it's interesting that you say that because it's been, I've been on a similar journey that it's, you can only give what you're allowing to come back in and replenish and fill and that ask, especially for people that are go-getters and have that type A personality and know how to get things done and don't want to be a burden to others. That ask is so difficult. And I, I, I know I have, um, cause you know, we talk about sometimes who are you not serving? Who are you, whose permission are you taking away and whose light are you not letting them shine? And it was really telling. I had a, a conversation with my best friend once where, you know, we we're just talking. I was like, Oh, the business, this is going great, whatever. And then the week before I said something about, oh, much different than last week where I wanted to crawl in the fetal position. And I'll never forget her response. And what's so interesting is she doesn't even remember this conversation. She's like, when did we, I'm like, oh, trust me. It, it so hit a nerve for me. Cause I remember her response was, when did you get to decide how I get to be your best friend? And I was like, Ugh. 
right? Because all three of those questions just came slamming down as a gut punch. And I said, what? And she goes, Candy, how do you feel when people reach out and ask you for help? And I started, and I actually might get emotional here, but I got really emotional and said, I feel needed. I feel wanted. I feel awesome. I feel loved. She goes, how come you don't let anybody else do that for you? And I just remember sitting there and I am, this always gets me emotional because when you think about when you don't ask for help, you're not letting someone step in that place of love and joy because for some people, it's the way they feel valued and needed and they have a gift to offer. When you don't ask, they don't get to show up and serve you yeah. in the way. And you said that as you, if you're going to keep giving to others and give back, how do you not open up that space to say, I'm not perfect. I'm not this. I need some help and I'm scared or I need some help. I don't know where to go so that someone else can step in their gift and give that back as well. And so I, I love that you went there so much. Um, just beautiful. That's, that's, you know, I, I've, I've never heard that said like that. And that's really, you know, Candy, I, I never know where the gifts will come from. I never know where the lessons will come from that will help me grow. And I, I, I'm so grateful that you would, would share that with me and with others, because that was so, that's such a powerful reminder of, and it brings it back to ourselves. It's just, you know, think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I want to help. How does it, how do you feel when somebody trusts you right enough to come to you when the, in in the time of need and they just need a hand up but it's as simple as that they're not Sometimes asking they just need a space for you to hold them they don't even it, need anything other than that safe space yeah yeah that's so big but that's the other thing we think that when someone asks it always is a matter of us needing to fix it or do something and sometimes the ask i know for me at least the ask sometimes is simply man i'm freaking out as an entrepreneur right now i'm scared i feel like a freaking awkward 15 year old that doesn't know which way's up and the money, whatever, something's happening. Mm -hmm. And I just need somebody to let me cry or let me vent or let me just be human and not this persona of being a thought leader who's out there trying to change the world. Right now my world feels like it's upside down and I just need someone to hold space. Yeah. Yeah. That's big. That's so hard big. to ask for that, isn't it? Oh my God. It's so, it's so hard to ask for that. And when you, you know, when somebody, I just, oh, I'm just so struck. Your friend is so brilliant. Right. I mean, because she brought it right around. I mean, it, it sounds like she brought it right around for you too. It's like, you know, it's like, how do you feel? It's like, oh, I agree. It's like, well, you know, how, how do you feel when, when, yeah. when you're shut out? Like, how do you think they're feeling? It's like, oh my God. I, um, yeah, that is, uh, that's key. Asking is, is big. You know, another, another thing that's been, that's been on my radar recently is um, when people are offering something of, of great deep value in terms of a validation, right? And like pushing that off. I have a, I, I don't know where this comes from, you know, because I, you know, people who know me, like you, like I, you, you wouldn't think that I have a problem with, with taking uh taking uh, compliments or self-esteem or anything like that or receiving, but it is like receiving, right? I guess it's the flip side of, of asking like just, and just receiving. Like I, I had some people who just absolutely poured into me. Uh -huh. They poured love and kindness into me. And I, I was, I didn't even, I, I didn't know how to respond. Like I, wanted to defer it or minimize it or push it away or just say, no, you know, or, you know, self-deprecate and to, to listen and to get over the shock <laughs> and to listen and then to simply process that and to say, thank you. And to know and to trust that, you know, maybe they're onto something, maybe, you know, maybe it's good to listen to them because maybe they're right. Maybe I, maybe I do have something pretty fantastic to offer the world, right? And yes, you do. <laughs> I, I was, you know, that, that I really want to tell those you. The words that you just said, I think we forget how powerful the two words thank you are 
when we receive them graciously and openly. When yeah. we really embrace and sit in a space of just gratitude, to not worry, to say, who am I, or how did that, or why, because it's not even just the words and the kindness and the ways people open up a beautiful space for us, but I'm finding that, and, and you know this, the bigger the game you play, it can't be you doing all of it. There has to be access to abundance that's not in your sphere right now. And when people want to offer their gifts or their high-end this or money even to help me get to the next, that space of just being able to drop in and have deep appreciation and gratitude and simply say thank you from the most open, gracious, loving space. It's where the magic happens. And I personally have found it to be a journey of surrender and trust and letting go and simply receiving and not thinking it has to come with strings or an agenda or whatever and just saying thank you. Thank yeah. you is so powerful in a complete sense. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, shoo. It's changed, you know, it's changed my life. And I never know, I never know where I'm going to grow next. You know, if you'd asked me, I mean, I'm like stunned. I was at, I was at my dentist's office who she's, and she is just an absolute peach. She is somebody who's just, she's deeply spiritual. She is kind. She is loving as well as being a kick ass dentist. Okay. So I was laughing and she's, she just said, Rob, what are you laughing about? I, and I'm like chuckling to myself. I must've looked like, I don't know. Anyway. So I, I, I said, Oh, I said, Cecilia, you know, I was just thinking about myself like six months ago and I, I kiss, I can't imagine that I'm here now where I'm at. I've learned and grown so much. And, and I think about the six months before that, I think I said the same thing six months before that. And I said the same thing six yeah. months before that. And I, and I, and I laughed and I just told her, I said, you know, I guess, so I said, Cecilia, I guess it's, oh, I don't know. I guess it's just, uh, it just re is a reflection how stunted my growth is. And, you know, she, she looked at me and she took off her mask and she took off the, 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 the goggles and she stopped the machines and she stepped back real serious. And she just said, Rob, it's not a matter of how stunted your growth is. It's, it's how expansive the experience of giving back is. Ooh, that's powerful. I was, I felt so blessed in that moment to have somebody like her to receive what I was thinking and what I was feeling and to help me process that in a way that, you know, that I can, that I can take forward in a really genuine, very, you know, very powerful way of, of thinking about things and saying, yeah, I am an example of giving, truly giving and what it can do for you, your personal, your, your, your emotional, your spiritual growth, your, your financial and professional growth. I, I am one of the examples and I'm living it. And it's, uh, the, I mean, you know, I get, that was really uh, just such a well, powerful That's moment. the thing when you're open to it. Isn't it true that there's magic miracles and gifts everywhere you look if you just stay open? I mean, we, we think everybody's like, oh, miracles don't happen. Miracles happen every day. Every day. Magic happens every day. Every day. Yes, you are giving gifts. And I remember reading something when I was transitioning. And I think it plays so into what you just said. When I was transitioning from corporate into this, this space now, which I would have never imagined it would be here five years ago when I left, right? And I remember reading something. It was in a white paper or something. And it said, never, ever return a gift to God that's been unopened or unappreciated. And I remember just sitting in that thinking, how many gifts show up in our life? that we're like return to sender because we don't want to go through the fact that it was wrapped in newspaper or it showed up differently than what we expected. And when we're listening, it's like when the right song comes on the radio, right? Or the fact that th this is like the second time I've heard the space around the five people you surround yourself. We were talking about that Tuesday night when I did a presentation and it became a big discussion. And so things keep showing up as signs and as, those many miracles that say we're right here, but we get so consumed in that space of how is something going to happen? When is it going to happen? Why is this happening or not? Instead of realizing, am I opening up access in every way possible to receive the gifts that are already mine to have?
And it's that receiving space, right? And it's that opening space. And I so love that you, because that magic. And so I know we're getting close on our time and bring this in, Rob, we're gonna have to have you come back because I really wanna get into more of what does it mean? And I want you to quickly tell us a little bit about this idea of give and grow rich. What does that mean? And when you start to kind of play in that bigger imagine space, what's coming? What does that look like for you? So a big, a big part of this con convergence of consumers and, and, and insight and purpose and really making a difference in our community because our, our worlds have gotten so, so much smaller is this opportunity, this massive, massive opportunity to build your moat, right? That's what Warren Buffett says, to build your own moat um, whether you're a new business, whether you're an established business wanting to grow, whether you're a, a business that is like fending off attacks, it's, it's this opportunity to give back and use community service from the heart, from the heart in a way that is truly a competitive advantage. And, and, you know, when you get the, the idea is this, you know, when, when, when you're strategic about it. And when I say strategic about it, I'm not talking about the business sense. I'm talking about it from a personal standpoint. If you're strategic about it and you just step back and you think a little bit about, hey, you know what? There's two companies, they do the same thing, it's the same price. Do I wanna work with the company that does some good shit in this world. And it doesn't matter whether it's the same thing that's really deep in my soul, but the fact that they're standing up and doing something and making a difference and having an impact. Do you want to do you want to you want to buy your your widgets, your staplers, your furniture, whatever it is? You know, everybody raises their hands. Well, you know what? You're not alone. And not only are you a business owner, you're also a consumer and all of those people around you who are saying the same thing, they're also voting with that. So strategically means thinking about it in terms of what is important to you, thinking of yourself and how you fit and thinking, Hey, you know what? I also, I also want to do business with brands and companies that are doing important things, right? So, you take that and wherever, wherever your purpose lies and you engage in a meaningful way, you will attract, you will attract so many awesome people who want to be around you, who share values, not again, not just about that one particular cause or movement, but want to be around you because you have values of serving, really truly serving. And so when you come from a genuine point, people will see that very quickly. They'll also catch your bullshit very quickly because if you're, you know, <laughs> I mean, so, you know, if you come from that starting point of your why, of your why, of what you want to be, what, what do you want to be a part of something that's bigger than you? Because we all do. Right. And when you get involved and now you have the opportunity to start using all the things at your disposal. And as business owners, you know, we are essentially the third rail of, of a community, right? There's government, there's social and religious organizations, right? And there's business. And in the middle is people. But businesses are the third rail. They're the ones that power that community in many ways. So we have a lot of resources. And when you get involved and you make shit happen, there's magic in that action. Right. And people are attracted to that. You know what I mean? They are, and I love that, you know, you say it, it, the strategic aspect, it's all about saying yes to yourself first. It's about knowing what your integrity is, knowing your what, why, and who. It's about aligning yourself to those people, those resources, and creating those communities around that. So I love it. I love all of that. And there's people right now that are like, how do I get more involved? How do I play in this space? And so Rob, as we're closing things out, how do people get a hold of you? What's the best way for them to continue this conversation with you? So I am, um, so this talk, you know, Give and Grow Rich, it's a really, it's a new program. I'm going to be unwrapping it in, in May in uh, New Mexico. It's going to be awesome. The we're best way. <laughs> yeah. And that's, you know, Sherry Watson and, you know, the power of purpose, which this is about. And I know you are so aligned 
yep. with making sure your purpose, we're going to have some integrity. fun here for sure. There's a lot of stuff going to open up in that space. So oh, it is going to be huge. You talk about uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of like-minded people making shit happen. It's a massive change, yeah. So, yes, so, we will be there, but how can they get a hold of you in the meantime? Right. So, it's kind of under wraps. So, in the meantime, the best way to do it is either to go to givingbackpodcast.com and in the subject line, just put Give and Grow Rich or you can send me an email at givingbackpodcast at gmail.com and say, give and grow rich. And I have some specials for you because I love you and I love your audience and there's nothing I wouldn't do for you, my dear. And all of that will be in the show notes. So you will get all of that information and Rob, so love you. So truly honored to be in your inner circle. I love that we get to play in spaces together. I am so excited. I get to see you um, at the event in May and uh, just know incredible gratitude for you sharing your brilliance sharing your love um, on our show today thank you for being here thank you thank you so much candy love you my dear just uh, absolutely adore you uh, likewise and for the rest of you listening um adore you as well and thank you for being on this continued journey as we continue to dig deeper into what it really means to be a leader and as you can see there are so many aspects and it always starts with saying yes to yourself and standing in a place to know that leadership is a choice it is how you choose to show up how you choose to serve others and how you choose to take personal responsibility in that space i am sending you all heart to heart hugs Please go out and stand in your purpose powerfully, passionately, and be present with all those you serve. We will catch up with you next time. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode with any of these powerhouses I'm bringing to the table. Love you all. We'll catch up with you next time. Mwah.